Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Trap. Tonight we're going to go over some quick configuration changes I've made to NVMS. The primary purpose of this video is to demonstrate how you can experiment with Lazy NVM and Harpoon in isolation. In subsequent videos, I'm going to isolate other plugins, and the point of these isolations is to make sure we get the dependencies correct. So we're only going to be using Lazy NVIM. We're going to use the NVIM switcher. I've done a couple other videos on that, and I'll pull in some configurations from my own uh, setup. So let's get started. And we're going to bring down something I'm calling Bear Lazy. This is Lazy NVIM with no plugins at all. So we're going to let this clone. We're going to let it bootstrap itself in our uh, config directory, and we're going to go into NVMS. And a quick change that was made for this particular distribution is we're no longer writing out all the alias names that we write or that we, we that are in the distros files. We're only writing the ones right now that we actually use. So in the nvms file, uh, I'm sorry, in the nvm app name file, we're only going to find the file that I just downloaded, which is um, nvm bear lazy. So bear lazy at this point is not going to have much into it. We're going to take a look at that right now. So we're going to hop over to another section. And we're going to go into it's where I downloaded it to. So remember, these go into your config directory. So we're going to go into the nvim bear directory. And we're going to take a look at that really quick. And we're going to look at bear lazy. And while we're at it, we're going to delete the other two so they don't get in the way anymore to show you that the delete still works. So that's just nvim s d. And we're going to get rid of bones. And we're going to run the same one again. And we're going to get rid of the tmux version. Okay, so a couple things. You notice that there's a file in here called do nothing and there's a readme. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to show you what it looks like and I'm going to show you why I'm going to take, I'm going to get rid of the do nothing file so you see what happens. So we'll pop up a directory and remember this is where NVMS installs things. So it's got its own directory so it does not conflict with anything you have out there. So we'll just go ahead and run nvm.bearlazy and we'll go ahead and hop into the init Lua file. And we're going to see in this file we've got the basic NeoVim color scheme, nothing fancy going on here, no line numbers, no anything. So think of this as running NeoVim with no RC. It's, it's a little more than that, but, but that's kind of a, a starting point to think about. If you notice down here in the bottom, we've got this press enter to continue. Okay, we got that because we haven't updated Lazy yet. We'll go ahead and update Lazy, so we're going to see that Lazy is actually present. So we'll type in Lazy. And we'll go ahead and do the upgrade. It's going to tell us the update's done. It's going to work on it. Now remember, this is a bare installation. So your key bindings, your auto commands, your configs, anything that you set up to make your NeoVim environment uh, customized to you does not exist at this point. So, and you might see me do some crazy typing here because this is a very minimalistic uh, environment for me. Now, if we go right back in and edit the same file, we're not going to see that message anymore at the bottom of the screen because we've told Lazy to update itself. So that's Lazy NVIM, the package manager. So we're focusing on the package manager right now. We're going to hop into the Lua directory, the plugin directory, and we're going to see that there's two files out there. There's a readme file that causes this directory to get created. I also wanted you to, to remind you why this file, why this do nothing file is here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that file. And we're going to see the do nothing uh, and I'm just going to run my editor. <laughs> so this is my version. It's just simply doing a return of nothing. We're doing that because if we, if we move this file to, to do nothing, to do nothing again, and we just add another A to it, now we're going to go right back into LazyVim, and what we're going to see, <clears throat> we're going to go right back into NeoVim. What we're going to see is that we're going to get an error from LazyNVim, which is what I want to demonstrate at this point. So we're going to write this is going to be the bare lazy again and now you're seeing that error okay so that error is caused because there's no specification for plugins being spe uh, brought into the environment so that's an expected behavior but you can see that um, get out of this and type it right um, we can see that we are still in we, we still have the lazy nvm package manager running but we just don't have a lot going on yet so what we're going to do is we're going to make that file we're going to make that go away <clears throat> by renaming that file again so we're going to move the uh, do nothing file back to do nothing now when we go right back into la bare, bare bones la or bare lazy we're going to see that that message went away all right so what we want to do now is we want to install a plugin and there's a lot of plugins out there one of, one of the things i find when i'm experimenting with plugins is they invert their dependencies so in other words a plugin like telescope doesn't require a lot of other plugins except plenary 
Um, but if you're using other packages like um, the FCS, Telescope FCF or Telescope uh, F, uh, Native File Manager, th those kinds of plugins, a lot of times people will make Telescope depend on those particular plugins instead of the other way around. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Harpoon because it's really simple, but I'm going to show you the power of configuring and getting your configuration right. And what I mean by right is you get your dependencies right. By getting your dependencies right, it allows you to disable a plugin without breaking anything else. So it gives you a way to, to very cleanly find out how your plugin operates on its own. And so I'm, I'm using this environment for me as a way to test a plugin before I put it into my production environment. So <clears throat> right now what I'll do is I already have a configuration set up for Harpoon, so we'll copy that file from my production environment. So that's over at git slash nvim. Uh, and vim uh, trap lua trap plugins harpoon copy that file okay <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to see in 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 that in this directory now we have a harpoon file so we'll go ahead and use um, we'll go ahead and try to edit that file with bare lazy and see what happens so we expect what we're seeing right now happen notice that a harpoon now is installed harpoon also brought in plenary and it also brought in telescope. So let's take a look at why that actually happened. So if we get out of this, we notice that we've got the Primogen's Harpoon in there. We are using uh, version the branch off of Harpoon 2, but notice those dependencies are actually properly declared. So this means that Harpoon depends on plenary and telescope, not telescope depending on Harpoon. So a lot of times what I see is people configuring telescope and they'll make telescope depend upon Harpoon. That makes it a little messier, especially when you get into your configuration and you want to do things like um, telling Harpoon, telling, telling Telescope about Harpoon or telling Telescope about some other plugin. You really should be doing that, in my opinion, in that particular plugin. So we're going to see another example of that in just a minute. So if we get out of this and we're going to bring in another plugin and then we're going to also just show you, I'm going to show you that Harpoon is actually working. So we'll go back into this file. If I do my, my keys are the way I've got this set up, it's the alt key. So I'm going to do the alt A key to Harpoon it and there it is Harpooned right there. Okay. Now at this point, because Harpoon depended upon telescope, I can do telescope commands. I don't have any key bindings, but I can do them. There's telescope working for me so I can navigate around and see that file. So what I'll do is I will bring up telescope, the telescope file file, and I'm going to go right back in Harpoon. I could have do, I could have used my Harpoon command if I wanted to. I'm going to disable Harpoon at this point. And so we just call this false. Sorry if I spelled that right, it'd be better. Now what we're going to see is when we go right back in, we're going to edit the same file, but Harpoon's no longer going to be active. All right, so I, I, I attempt to run it, hit the right key, hit the wrong key. Get the right key, take out the video. So now if I try to bring up the Harpoon menu or, or Harpoon a file, it doesn't work. Now let's take a look at Lazy. So you notice the Harpoon can be clean, Telescope can clean, and Plenary can be clean. So let's go ahead and clean them. They're gone. Don't exist anymore. So if I get out and go right back into that environment, even though the file still exists because I've got it disabled, it will not be processed by the Lazy NVIM package manager. So let's take a look at that. It only knows about one plugin, that's the package manager. So let's prove this point just a little bit more. Let's bring in one other plugin. This time we're going to bring in the FCF native plugin that Telescope can use. So let's bring that one in directly. So we'll go ahead and make another copy and we'll go over to find the H command. We'll delete that and we'll look for Telescope and we'll look for FZF native Lua. We'll bring that in. So we're copying that file and we'll go ahead and um, uh, use NVIM Bear Lazy to take a look at that file to see what it looks like. Okay, there it again. So we're bringing plenary back in. Okay, we got some errors. Those things are going to get resolved because it's going to build, but the build command has to run on this machine, so it's got to run the first time. So we're going to bring it in again, and now all life is good. If we go back to Lazy, Lazy now knows about those three plugins. So notice in my configuration, I don't know anything about Telescope. I'm simply saying that Telescope FCF native depends upon Telescope and it brings it in. That means my Telescope is using strictly the defaults of Telescope, nothing, no, no custom configuration at all. It's bare bones from the standpoint that you're using the Lazy Package Manager. If I want to add that other plugin, I'll go ahead and do that back in. We'll bring up the Harpoon file again, so we'll just do the telescope 
uh, telescope that's starting with capital T and, and telescope file manage file and that's the find files and we'll go ahead and bring in harpoon and we'll go ahead and make that true again and get rid of that true write it and go right back in to the same file notice harpoon is coming in now since telescope is already installed plenary is all installed that's the only thing that's going to install this particular time now if I get out and uh, get out of my editor and get out all the way get out all the way and we're going to go right back into that same file we'll go ahead and go into telescope this time I'll harpoon again and we're going to harpoon that file bring up the menu and get the right keystroke go back to desktop number five come on come on come on come on. go back to five harpoon the file with an a bring up the menu there it is and let's go ahead and bring up uh, telescope find files and we'll go ahead and do the telescope native we'll harpoon that file and now we see the harpoon is working so at this point I can do the navigate uh, alt one two and I'm, I'm harpooning away and I got the two files so what I'm showing you here is that I can work on a plugin in isolation and I don't have to worry about any of the other configurations so I, I just figure out how the plugin works. Hey everyone, this is Trap. Thanks for watching again. I uh, hope you got something out of this, gave you an idea of how to uh, configure your plugins and isolations and, and make sure your dependencies are correct. Uh, I really encourage you to use the enable flag, enable true or enable false. It really gives you some really creative ways where you can uh, experiment with plugins. And, uh, enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world. Uh, God bless you. My name is Trap.